Good morning, everyone, and welcome to St. Jacob's Stone Church out on the lawn. Here we are up in the upper cemetery, and it is a beautiful day out. We're going to start off this morning with some announcements. We usually do those at the end of the service, but since we're ending with taps and some music, we thought it would be a little more respectful this way. First of all, you'll see next to the platform, which, by the way, is from, from the Miller Auction, uh, when they used to do auctioning, this was their platform. Uh, they also gave us this basket and beautiful red uh, sheet of cloth that's going to be used later for flowers for those who have passed away in this last year. So the flowers are from, uh, is given into, there's two baskets. The first one is to the glory of God in memory of Charles, Andy, and Phyllis Toman. Uh, he died in uh, 85 and she in February 8th, 2022, by their children, Diane, Karen, Tim, and families. The second play is given to the glory of God and in memory of James L. Miller, by Doris Jack, John Laverne, Kathy, and family. Birthdays for this week, because people still get going older, which is a good sign considering the alternative. Joanna, Judy, Todd L. Miller, Dorette Garrett, Neil A. Gorba, who's here today, I see him. Ang Angela F. Holland, William Garman Jr., and Gerald L. Shu Jr. The Broadbacks Band is here, and they are here to play some music. First, I want to thank Adam Marsh, who's our tech crew, along with Jonas Sterner, and the uh, St. Jacob's Choir is here. But the Broadbacks Band, and they are an amazing band, do such great music as you're going to hear today. And they're going to do a, a prelude. And uh, I'll let Chris Gifford, the band director, thank you for your service, sir, announce the, the, the songs, the selections they're going to do. Well, thank you for having us this morning. Uh, we're going to uh, begin this short segment of the, of the program with a piece called Lest We Forget. It was written by the composer James Swearingen in honor of his father, who served in World War II. And so this. Uh, uh, it is a, a perfect opportunity for us to not forget the sacrifices made by all the servicemen and women uh, that we honor on this Memorial Day. So here's Lest We Forget by James Swearingen. Thank <laughs> you. 
Our next selection is probably well known to many of you. It's by Aaron Copeland it's called Fanfare for the Common Man. And uh, he wrote this uh, in, in, uh, as part of a contest and his, select, his piece was selected as the winner of the contest. Uh, and so this is Fanfare for the Common Man.
We have one more selection for you. Uh, this is the very famous Battle Hymn of the Republic. Uh, and um, uh, this was written by, uh, uh, the words were written by a poet named Julia Ward Howe. Uh, she was visiting Washington, D.C. Uh, during the Civil War, uh, actually early in the Civil War, 1861. She heard the Union soldiers singing a tune uh, with the words to, uh, uh, called John Brown's Body. Uh, and uh, she was encouraged by a minister to rewrite the words, write, write better words for that song. And so she wrote the words that we uh, know now as the Battle Hymn of the Republic. And there's a beautiful setting by a, a composer named Peter Wilhowski. Here's the Battle Hymn of the Republic. Thank you. 
Thank you, Ben. I'd like to welcome everyone to this 129th Memorial Day celebration here at Stone Church. Whether we are dealing with a pandemic, good or bad weather, we are grateful for those of you who are here in person and all who have joined us by telephone and over Zoom. We welcome all of you to this remembrance celebration. We have placed a wreath at the old graveyard by the church in honor of veterans interred there. We have also placed a wreath in, in this cemetery upon the grave of a veteran this year that is Raymond Smith. This wreath laying ceremony here at Stone Church serves as our connection for many similar wreath laying ceremonies throughout the United States today. Let it be known that as we have placed these wreaths, wreaths are being placed around the world in honor of our veterans. We pause to remember and honor the spirit of all of our service members and other first responders in our nation and around the world. We honor all of those who have served or are serving with honor, courage, and commitment. Please take a moment and notice the flags that adorn many of the graves here in the cemetery. Our flags do not fly because the wind moves them. They move with the last breath of each soldier who died protecting us. And now for our call to worship. God is our refuge and strength and ever present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea. Though its waters war, roar with foam and the mountains quake with their surging, there is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy place where the Most High dwells. God is within her. She will not fall. God will help her at break of day. Nations are in uproar. Kingdoms fall. His, he lifts his voice. The earth melts. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. And now the band and choir will offer God of our fathers.
like to thank the ambulance crew from the Jefferson uh, Fire Department for being here today. They're, they're standing in blue over on the other side of that tent. Thank you so much for uh, they serve also who stand in the way we do for you today. Thank you. I hope you'll only have to do standing and not much else. Let us come before the Lord in prayer. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for a beautiful day. We thank you that we can gather together Today, because we are proud of our country and love it, we thank you that we live in a nation that's free. We are grateful that we live under laws and not violence. We are grateful, Lord, that we are people who care about one another. We are here today, Lord, to remember those who have passed, both those who have passed in the last year and those who have perished in battle. We understand, Lord, that it is such painful memories when we lose someone. We know that they are with you in heaven, which brings us some comfort. But we know that when our lives are so part of someone else's, it's hard to let go and say goodbye. We ask that you be with us when we are grieving, as we know you have been, because you always have a new day and a new tomorrow. And we are grateful for that. And know we will be united with those who have died in your eternal kingdom. Dear Lord, we ask that you continue to be with our congregation, that as we live the love of Christ, which is our way of sharing that love with others, whether it's in kindness or in faith, whether it's in helping actions, or encouragement to others. Help us to be symbols and models of that faith. In real life, of course, we know that's not always easy to do. There are people who make us angry, hurt our feelings, get us upset. Help to calm our spirits, Lord, and help us to heal in ways that are constructive and helpful. Bless us this day, watch over us, this we pray in the name of your son, Jesus. Amen. Now, Mr. Fred Marsh is going to be sharing our prayer list with you. Our prayer list for today includes the following name. Kennedy Bear Jr., Reverend Phyllis Baum, Rachel Cooley, Joan and John Fabula. Jan Fry, Steph Fry, Audrey Graybill, Whitney Graybill, Sandy Gooseberger, Roger Hemmler, Angie Caltrider, Barbara Caltrider, Crystal Myers Kreider, Dee Jones, Gardy Lawrence, Jackie Mummert, and newborn baby Kyler, born this past week. Jay Miller, Jane Nace, Sandra, Sandra Pewterball, Betty Rollman, Charles Van Scoy Sr., Ann Stone, Larry Thomas, and Sonia Walker, and for much improved, Linda Garceau. And we pray for the family and friends of Adam Mao and Larry Sowers. Join with me in sharing the prayer our Lord taught us as we say together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. scriptures for the day. First is taken from Psalm 33. Our souls wait for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. And from 2 Corinthians, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our affliction, so that we may be able to comfort those who are in any affliction with the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted by God. Just as we have a share in Christ's many sufferings, so also through Christ we share in God's great help. such a peaceful day so beautiful the lord could not have provided us with better weather than this it's cool and yet just a little sunshine to make us comfortable and in this peaceful place we are it's almost hard to believe that there can be wars going on in different parts of the world it's amazing when you think about it how many people have died in wars in Vietnam, it was 50,000 at least on our side. In World War II, some 85 million people died. And half of those were, uh, half a million were Americans. In World War I, 160 million American troops perished. And in the Civil War, it was in the hundreds of thousands, not to mention those who had to survive after the war was over. And 
it's sad in a way that so many people die in wars, but it's also sad that our, our country has a very warlike nature right now. I mean, you hear politicians not just talking anymore about the fact that people disagree with them on politics. They, they call them horrible names and do horrible things. It's not just that people get angry and lose their temper. We have people trying to harm others with weapons and physically in different ways. And even in local communities, you see people acting out and having little toleration with one another. I think from the Bible, it's a very fascinating story about someone who had to deal with a very delicate situation. And he himself was quite a warrior. His name was David. You remember how the story starts. David is a boy. His dad tells him, go to the battleground and bring this food to your brothers who were out there fighting the Philistines, their normal enemy. And David goes to the battleground and nothing's happening because Israel and the Philistines have decided to settle the battle by a fight between two champions. It's a fight to the death. Whoever wins, wins for their country. And whoever dies, of course, loses for their country. And the Philistines have a ringer of a warrior. His name is Goliath. He's an enormous man, so much taller than anybody else. His spear is like a two by four, and he can shoot it with the accuracy and deadly aim of the lightest spear of all. And he's taunting the troops of the Israelites, come on out and fight me. No one wants to go out because it will be suicide and they'll bring dishonor to their country when they die. So no one wants to go out. And David says, I'll take him on. You're a boy, they tell him. I've fought bigger bears and lions defending my father's sheep. When he goes out to meet Goliath, Goliath laughs at him. What do you send out to me? He laughs. Meanwhile, David puts a stone in a sling, winds it up, pegs the stone, and hits Goliath in his head, and drops him to the ground. He then takes the giant's sword and cuts the giant's head off. Gets a little bloody at times in the Bible. Sorry about that. And so David is now hero of his country. Saul, the king of Israel, invites him to stay in his home. And David is his status goes from that of a shepherd boy to a friend of the king. And then Saul starts to be suspicious of David because David goes out in battle with the army of Israel. And now the women are chanting, Saul has killed his thousands and David his ten thousands. Kings don't want to hear that. That's a sound of maybe there's somebody trying to take over the kingship from him, as often happened in ancient times. But Saul gets very angry at David. Sometimes he's shooting spears at him. Sometimes he's allowing David to play the harp to calm his soul. So then Saul decides to up the ante. I want you to marry my daughter, Michal, he says. Wow. Well, David would become the son-in-law of the king. Marry my daughter, Michal. You just have to get visible evidence that you've killed a hundred Philistine soldiers. Saul figures he may have killed Goliath with a lucky shot, but he's not gonna kill a hundred Philistine soldiers without one of them killing him. David comes back with the evidence. Saul has to marry his daughter to David. He is very angry. And so David hears through his wife and through uh, her, bro her brother, Jonathan, the king is going to kill David. So he gets out of town. He stays in a place out in the wilderness with a group of other men who have had to flee from King Saul. And Saul goes after him. He's trying to find him, but never can. Until one day, he gets a message of David's exact location. And so Saul brings an army of 3,000 to find David and they can't find him. 
So in the midst of all this, Saul decides to go into a cave to do necessary business, to relieve himself. And what cave does he walk into? But the very cave that David and his men are hiding. And Saul doesn't know they're there. So just as Saul is sitting down, David's men say, kill him, kill him now while you've got the chance. David is taking it seriously. He goes up behind Saul and his conscience bothers him. Why does he do that? Why doesn't he kill Saul and get rid of his enemy who's out to kill him? First, David connects the dots. We always think when we're angry or fearful of someone, or if they've hurt us, do we ever think of what's going to happen next if we do what we feel like doing? What would happen to David? Well, if Saul didn't come out because David had run a sword through him, Saul's general of those 3,000 men waiting wouldn't have said to the men, guys, let's go home. The boss has taken a long time in the john. Let, let's go, uh, he'll come back to headquarters when he's done. They would not. They would be in that cave with spears pointing ahead of them and ready to murder the first person who moved if it wasn't Saul. It would be a lot of people dead. And whether David was a valiant warrior or if he had three or 30 or 300 men with them, they were all gonna die. And David connected the dots and knew that. Couldn't do away with Saul. It wasn't going to work. Everyone would die. Do we ever think that way when we're really angry with someone and want to get revenge? Or maybe it's not revenge exactly. We want them to feel the same pain they've made us to feel and maybe a little more. And we think of how we're going to do that. And it's just going to make a mess of things if we start connecting the dots. So David didn't do that. There was another motive David may have had. David wanted to be king one day. He wanted to be in place of Saul by nice means. And if he murdered Saul, there would have possibility if he could ever escape, which didn't seem likely, that he could have been king. Then what? Well, then what would have happened is any leader in Israel with the slightest ego and 50 guys in back of him would be out hunting David. And if he killed David, he would be the hero of the nation. He would be the one that brought the king's murderer to justice and he would be in power. David didn't want that to happen. More than that, Saul was the first king of Israel and if David killed the first king, then it meant that kings were fair target and David didn't want to be that target. So he didn't decide to do that. But neither could David sit in the cave and hope that Saul went away. Because while that cave might have been the last one that Saul's men looked into to see if David was there, they would come back and they would check nevertheless, because the boss would be pretty angry. Saul would be angry if he couldn't find him. I think David did it for another reason. He did it to try to redeem Saul, to try to turn an enemy into a friend. And he did it in an interesting way. He let Saul go from the cave and he followed at a safe distance and he called out Saul's name and he bowed to the ground in respect. And he said, Saul, why do you pursue like me like this? I'm not your enemy. Back there in the cave, I could have killed you. And he holds before him a piece of Saul's robe that David cut off while he was squatting. And look what I could have done to you. Why do you chase me? I'm nothing but a dead dog, a flea to you. Let the Lord judge between you and me who is righteous. And Saul looks at David and he says, David, is that you, my son? And Saul started to cry because he realized David could have killed him and he spared his life. So we live in a world today where there are a lot of angry people. There are dictators that are bent on destroying other people's countries like in Russia's invasion of Ukraine. There are dictators 
or two generals in Sudan who are battling out a civil war in which a lot of people are going to die so that their egos might be satisfied that they might be the greatest person. There are politicians who are always in a fight. And even some of the people we know can be contrary and angry like that. Let us take a moment and take a breath like David did. Let us let the spirit of the Lord into our hearts. Let God's peace and love enter in and think of how we can save the day. Amen. Mr. Dale Miller is going to come forward now. He is going to be uh, reading the names of those who have passed in this last year and are buried here in the cemetery. And we ask the children to come up to that blanket where the flowers are, the carnation flowers. And as Mr. Miller reads off each name, one of the children is going to bring a, bring a flower and put it in the basket. And once the service is over, we invite you uh, who are here today, who have lost loved ones whose names were read, if you take one of those flowers in memory of them, our honor to them and their memory. Mr. Miller. Good morning. At this time, we'll remember those who have been interred in this cemetery throughout the past year. They are Kyle J. Gladfelder, Shirley A. Kessler. Willis F. R. Miller, Charles E. Lockman, James L. Miller, Dean L. Kramer. Gregory L. Krebs, Marguerite M. Heidler, Robert E. Heidler, Sr., Deborah Ann Eibel, Mary J. Bensel, Janet L. Rohrball, Jeffrey E. Poist, Pearl Clemens. Megan Nicole Mundus, Julian S. Brody, David E. Sprankle, Sarah Jane Miller. Velma B. Balker, Rachel W. Saunders,
of those that the names that Dale's at Dale read and we told the bell there are is a white carnation up here for you our benediction we wait in hope for the Lord he is our help and our shield in him our hearts rejoice we trust in his holy name may your unfailing love be with us Lord even as we put our hope in you. And now the Broadbex band will play taps and we will end with three selections.
Thank you. Thank you. 
Expand, Chris Rippard, their leader, the wonderful music. We are so blessed to have such a wonderful orchestra. Thank you, St. Jacob's Choir. Thank you, Adam March, our tech guy today. And uh, it's such a beautiful day. Take your time, get to your cars, and uh, drive slowly because we're all bottled up here, but our ushers will be sure to get you out of here and get you home in a decent hour. Thank you for coming and being part of this. It's such an honor to be able to do this each year. God bless you.